The road to success is rarely a straight one, and small changes along the way can pay dividends, even more so, it turns out, if you have a background in accounting. Here's the latest installment of Sidelines. Lighting up dance floors around the world, Chromio has solidified its spot in the music business. Dave One and P-Thug have merged the worlds of electro-funk and synth-pop with smash hits and a loyal fan base. Away from music, they've capitalized on their notable fashion sense with a clothing line and the numbers-oriented duo are definitely on top of their accounting. It's a partnership that works takes fresh steps with their latest album. One thing we know in the music business today, there, there are a lot of ways to define success. Yeah. Um, obviously, if people are listening to your music, and in, in your case, they definitely are, that's one measure of success, but there's not one roadmap that's right. to success today. So talk to us about how you guys, how would you define success in the music business today? For us, success is longevity because um, you know, it's always like, you know, there's always that expression, like it's a marathon, not a sprint. And for us, like, I think it's fair to say that at this point, Chromio is like a career artist. We're, we're a career band. And um, when we set goals, we really look at the big picture of what this band, where this band stays throughout the years. Um, We've seen the music business shift from physical to illegal downloading to uh, you know the return of vinyl to Spotify playlists and, and all the cynicism that can go along with that. And to the return of CDs. <laughs> yeah, to like the return We've of... We've seen three mediums of music. You yeah. Know, it's like... The CDs disappearing, CDs reappearing as like almost like a collectible item. I think mm -hmm. what you meant, but like so, it's it's if we only me measured success by like the paradigms that are in place at a point where we put out an album in a music in a business that's constantly changing, we wouldn't see the big picture. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we just look at the scope of our career and we're like, all right, we're still in a place where we can do what we do play the shows we want to play, play all the festivals we want to play, make the music we want to make, keep certain people happy, keep ourselves happy, and evolving as artists and so on. So that's kind of like what we have to tell ourselves to keep ourselves grounded, because like, if we start obsessing about like, are we going to get today's top hits on Spotify, say for instance, like, that's just going to give everybody an ulcer when in two years, that thing that might not even be a factor anymore. You don't know. Like, I remember when we were putting out our last album, literally, like, the metric the people who were talking about was, like, Shazam's. Like, oh, my God, the song's getting Shazam'd in Orange County right now? Wow. Like, that's not, it's not a thing so much anymore. You know, and it sounds crazy when I say it. But that was only four years ago. So everything changes so fast. Like, we just got to look at the band and the, the business model of the band and adapt it to the times. It just, that's kind of how we see it. It's really, like, a long-term thing. Yeah. Success, to me, is also... Uh, artistic and creative bucket list things that we want to do and accomplish totally you know um, in the in the more like musical sense you know like I've always wanted to do a song like this I always wanted to do a song with that person I always wanted to th that's also success to be able to achieve that throughout your life it's just a boxes that you take like yes the fact that the, we have our own studio now the fact yeah. that you know it's like it yeah there's so many ways to look at it and i think so much of being an artist is being able to recalibrate yourself or calibrate yourself mentally intellectually to feel good about what you're doing and to be able to find a sweet spot find a place of happiness because you know if you're looking for outside validation all the time it's a recipe for disaster i think and you use that word evolve uh, evolution of marketing or, or understanding how the industry has evolved. I think uh, people see in your marketing, whether it's all the effort that goes into cover art yeah. or something like Mallard Air. Can you guys tell us about <laughs> Mallard Air, what it is, uh, and why you decided to come up with that? You know what? Well, okay, so this was like, 
again, like on the last album, we were like, all right, what can move the needle outside of, you know, we had a song on radio, and we saw where that was going, how that was going, and we're like, what other ways can, what other things can we do to move the needle to give this album some legs? We were at our third single already, so we went to Funny or Die. And we were like, you guys like Chromio, what should we do? And they were like, well, we should start a fake airline. Like those were like the early days of trolling, basically. So we we're like, let's start a fake airline, let's get a press release together, a Twitter account, and just blast all these things about this fake airline that we're doing, but of course we pretended it was real. And then it would culminate with the release of a video for our song Frequent Flyer that would be produced and hosted by Funny or Die. So it's just those little things. I mean, luckily there's a sense of humor embedded into what we do so we can have fun with it. It's like, you know, we've got an extremely supportive label in Canada so they can indulge us. So, you know, they had the idea to put like the, the giant posters of us in heels in bus shelters around Toronto. And you know, that's like, to us it's cool, it's subversive, it's creatively, you know, bold. We love that. And it's hard not to think of music and not think of fashion and style. And I know when you were first making music, uh -huh. you weren't necessarily thinking about what's the outfit that aligns with this album. Uh -huh. But a lot of people have have looked at the fashion sense of Chromio, and, and now that actually Dave, that, that starts to, to run into other opportunities. Uh -huh. Frank and Oak, we've, oh, yeah. we've seen people yeah. talking about the design work that you've been doing with yeah. them as well. Yeah, I, I, I think that like, um, I think for us in this point, at this point in our career, you know, Chromio can be um, sort of a, a launch pad for us to be um, multidisciplinary artists. And we take our videos very seriously, we take our artwork very seriously, we take our stage design very seriously. Like one of the things that we're the most happy with on this album cycle is our, our new stage design. And that's something we're really involved with. And whether it's things that are outside of music per se or that are ancillary to the music we do, you know, they're, they're just endeavors that are important to us and that make us feel like again, you know, we're 40 years old, so it's not like it's not just about strutting around with guitars. Like it starts with that, but it, it can be a bigger picture, part of a bigger picture, hopefully. So doing all of this, but also being aware of the the numbers, the dollars and cents behind yeah. the business. Yeah, definitely. You More are so than ever. You are literally an accountant. Yes. Yeah. The dollars and cents is dollars him. and cents. Yeah. Cents. So this. focus on the sense, as our <laughs> tour manager will attest. So this, for, for you, this started, you're a kid, your family has a deli. Yes. And, um, and, yes. and, you said, and your accounting so career <laughs> yeah. begins then, basically? I, I literally started doing the cash at my parents' deli at eight years old, <laughs> like eight, nine years old. I was that kid behind the counter at the bodega, like, 725, please, you know? Um, and it, it, what we do is a business. You know, it starts with a craft, but if we want to survive, it's also a business. So we got to be smart how we spend, where we spend, when do we invest, when do we not invest. That's, those are questions we ask ourselves all the time. And it like, goes from the, ev from the everyday penny on tour to the bigger picture of how is the year looking and how much are we going to put into the stage design. Production. Production. Crew, you know. You know, like one bus, two buses, we can't do it. Da, da, da. These are these are things that I think artists don't want to deal with usually. And a lot of the times they lose. They get not, taken advantage not of paying, yeah. Right? Yeah. They don't care or they don't pay attention and somebody doesn't care as much as they would, so they get taken advantage of. And you can't have a long career if you don't pay attention to those things. That's spoke. That's that's can't get a better answer than that. That's P's department. And Chromio will be performing this weekend at the Oceaga Festival in Montreal.